Welcome back to our series on gospel-centered families and relationships. In this video, we're going to look at this idea of routine, and it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. In fact, the next three principles, uh, routine, ritual, and rhythm, all come from this uh, chapter 6, verse 8. So we'll spend a little bit more time into this, uh, into this particular one, but it's very important stuff. Verse 8 says, tie them, and the them there are the principles and the truths of God that we talked about in the second video, which was also the first principle. Tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. It's this idea of routine uh, that we want to get into. Routine are those things that we do automatically without even thinking about it. We all have routines. Uh, we have our morning routine, we have our evening routine, this is what we do every day. And routine is just something we do, we don't even think about it. Uh, notice the, the text there. Routine, tie them as symbols on your hands. Think about, think about a ring that you have. Oh, no, I, I've, I've been married at, the, at this recording 37 years this spring, and I don't even take this ring off. It's always there and always seen, but I don't think about it because it's always there. Think about a watch. I put this watch on every morning, but I don't think about it. I just do it. It's part of my routine. But I'm always, when I want to know what time it is, I do this. Whenever I wave, something always sparks. And people see that. It's part of the routine. And it's something I can see. Bind them uh, on your heads. Uh, at that time, they would, they would wear things and they would bind the uh, things on their head. And even, even sometimes they would put little boxes to remember things. But in our day and time, think of a hat. Think about... It's going, to, it's going to be hot outside, I'm going to cover my head with this, or I'm going to put a ball cap on, or, or whatever type of head covering you may wear. Think about that. Don't think about it, I just go and I put my hat on and, and let's go. Think about those things. It's part of your routine. This is something you do every day. Paint them on the doorpost of your home. Uh, think about pictures and sayings and signs that you may have in your home or uh, I know my wife writes scriptures and she has them posted at different places that we frequent in front of sinks or lavatories or uh, uh, she has signs in different parts of our home that make us think about things. I don't think about it, but I see it and it's part of our routine. But if it's not there, if my ring is gone, if my watch is gone, if I, oh, where's my hat? Oh, where's my keys? Where's, where's that sign at? I begin to miss it. So routine are those things that we don't think about, but we're glad they're there and they get into our mind. These are things you see every day. And they're reminders about the truth of who God is and who we are in Him and who are, how we're supposed to live that out in this world. For years when my children were little, I would tell them, hey, go as you go out today, you be a leader. You do what's right when other people are doing wrong and when nobody's looking. And it was just became part of a routine phrase that I told to my children every day. And I'm sure they got tired of hearing it. But there was one time I remember whenever I didn't say it, and one of my kids said it back to me. I was like, yeah, you got it. Good job. Uh, routine reinforces the biblical truths of parenting and mentoring towards children and towards the disciple. I love you. I'm proud of you. Good work. Phrases, remember who you are. You're doing great. Phrases that we say that become part of our routine language of speaking truth into those that we are mentoring or that we're raising or rearing as children. And it becomes part of that thing that, that, that they like to hear and they need to hear from us. What routines do? One, they reinforce learning. Just to remind, just to remind. If I were to say one plus one, you just said in your mind, too. I hope you did anyway. Because why? Because you learned that so long ago and probably taught that to somebody else at some point in time. And that truth was reinforced. When we do that with God's Word, when we do that with the truth of who God is and who we are in Him, and it's incorporated into our lives, then that be, 
becomes who we do and how we operate. We don't even think about it. We just do it. It becomes, uh, defines who are, what we are in Jesus Christ. It also communicates clear expectations of beliefs and behaviors. Whenever, as a parent, I have spoken truth into my children or grandchildren, or spoken truth into my wife, or she has spoken truth into me. As a teacher or a mentor, I have spoken truth into people or my students, or spoken people that I have discipling relationships with. That communicates clear boundaries. God says you're a child of God, and you think differently, and you are differently. So when they go out and they're tempted in such a way, and they see things that are wrong, it's going to reinforce that's wrong. And I need to give myself pause and think about that. And it, it, that, so the truth, as we speak and we have routinely spoken truth of who God is and who we are in Him, then it creates those clear expectations. It also provides stability because it's predictable. I know that if this person that I'm working with, and I could call to mind you know, half a dozen people, if they're if they're going to, if they're faced with a situation, I know what they're going to do because the truth of God is in them and they're going, they're stable people and they're going to do the right thing in a situation and I trust that. Those who are new to the faith, they still may be a little, a little weak-legged there and they need that truth spoken into them to reinforce them and, and, and we help them along and remind them and grow them. And, and have those clear expectations so that they know what is expected and we know the, the stability that is in their life. The other thing that routine does, it creates an atmosphere of blessing. And that gives a lot of comfort. Uh, the world, you know, the Bible talks about that, see I lay before you a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you follow these truths. A curse if you do not. Outside of following Jesus is the curse. The world curses. It's a broken, fallen world, and it curses people. And it creates fear, and it creates uncertainty and doubt. And when we line ourselves up with the blessing of who God is and who He designed us to be, and we begin to walk that out, even if we teeter-totter and hobble along sometimes, when we walk that out, the blessing, we're lining ourselves with the blessing that comes from the throne of God. And when, when we reinforce those truths and people are in relationship with us, whether it be a physical family or a forever family, we are blessed. There's grace that's given and grace blesses people. There's forgiveness, there's correction, but not, what in the world are you doing correction? But hey, let me guide you along here with the truth of who God called you to be. That's a blessing relationship. As you grow, personally, your routines will change and you'll be blessed more. You'll see the blessing more and more in your life. Uh, as your family, physical and forever grows, your routines will change as well. And therefore, there's more and more blessing. And you just live in this blessing. Now, we live blessed in a fallen world, so we know that there's difficulties along the way. And now, these ideas of routines are not legalistic rules to follow, but they're guidelines meant to bless and guide and foster an atmosphere of growth and relationship as we walk along in Him. So routinely, in your physical families, in your forever family, routinely speak, have things that always speak uh, the truth of who God is and who we are in Him. The symbols behind me, we talked about in the very first video, uh, are, give us a picture of the gospel. When people see these symbols, either tattooed on your arm, when they see them with bracelets, when they see them as stickers on your windows of your vehicles or license plates or wherever you may write them or have them, it reminds you and sends a message to the people that this is the center of what we do and why we do what we do gospel-centered families and relationships, the truth of who God is and who we are in Him, and those routines that we do to remind ourselves of that, 
keep us grounded and anchored in the center of where God wants us to be.